Okay, here are the three big stories for today. This is kind of the extended cut. So uh, Ukraine's new armed forces chief warns of extremely difficult situation on the front line. And by the front line, we're talking about Avdika more than anything else. The new chief of Ukraine's armed forces warned that the situation on the front lines has become extremely difficult as Russia pours in additional troops and equipment after months of trying to capture the eastern Ukrainian strongholds of Avdivka and Kupiansk. Okay, now, Avdivka doesn't really matter, but it'll be a moral victory for the Russians, and they're trying to deprive them of that, but at a certain point, it's just not worth it, and you have to get out of Dodge before you're encircled. Ukraine, which is heavily dependent on economic and military aid from its Western allies, has been facing a shortage of ammunition and military equipment on the battlefield. In fact, I've seen multiple articles talking about how this is an ammunition famine and how the Ukrainians have to shoot only one for every 10 or one for every 20 uh, shells that the Russians are firing at them. It's just it's very, very bad. Uh, operating The operating environment is extremely complex and intense. Russian occupiers continue to step up their efforts and have large advantage in personnel numbers, Colonel General Alexander Sersky wrote on Facebook on February 14th, a day after visiting the front lines together with Defense Minister Rusim Umarov. Okay, so I got to give them credit for um, actually being there, actually getting to the front lines and seeing what's going on for themselves. So that's that's good in their favor. Reinforcing it, I don't think they're reinforcing it to take it. As far as I understand, they're just bringing in this other a unit, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a little bit, in order to allow them to retreat with as many men as possible. On the Avdika front, only during the last day, the units of the Defense Forces of Ukraine repelled 29 attacks by Russian occupiers. And the story goes on. But then we saw this in Forbes. The Ukraine may have deployed one of its best brigades to try to save Avdika. And then a little bit later, we saw this. Ukraine has two specialized assault brigades. It sent one to Avdivka to cover the garrison retreat. Now they're talking about the 3rd Assault Brigade and a element of the 3rd Assault Brigade is a unit that we actually were trying to adopt to equip because they're so new. They're, they're a very, very new unit that has not seen combat yet. They don't have tourniquets. They don't have bandages. They don't have other medical necessities. And to our minds, it's like, how can you send them into harm's way without these kind of necessities? So with uh, Greg Terry, and uh, if you're not familiar with Greg Terry, go to at Greg Terry Experience. Uh, he's actually in Ukraine right now. You'll see here, this is Johnny Pierce from ATP Geopolitics, who is out there with Greg right now as they're seeing things. Here's Rick the Ukrainian uh, with Greg and and uh, Johnny. So we were working on a big fundraiser. We're about to start another push to uh, provide them with medical supplies, uh, tourniquets, bandages, things along those lines because they, they simply do not have that kind of thing. Uh, now, if we look at the map of Avdivka, and again, I can't provide you the military background. Go see Mercado. Go see um, uh, ATP will do a good job with this. Go see Combat Vet Reacts. They'll do far better jobs at, at uh, the military maps. But if you look at it, this is seven days ago, and here we go. And the next day, the next day, the next day, the next day, next, next next. It, it's just they keep moving in and encircling Avdivka. So this is, and, and I've gotten some inside baseball from people that I know that are there saying it is really bad on the ground. I'm not going to tell you exactly what they told me because I will only show you things that I can prove in actual, like, you know, real mainstream media kind of news. So by doing that, I avoid the uh, the trap of, you know, well, he knows this inside stuff. This is what Doug McGregor does all the time or Scott Ritter or whoever. I'm, I'm not going to go down that kind of path, but it's bad. And uh, so if you're a praying man, now's the time to start praying for uh, them in, in Avdivka. Okay. Uh, next big story we talked about both this morning and then in the special after that, the uh, Caesar Kunikov was sunk uh, by Ukrainian drones. And you could see all kinds of things about it. Uh, there are memes that followed as well. Here's before and after. This one I see every time and it never gets old. I always chuckle at it. Um, it's just, it's it's powerful. Um and it's getting really busy at the bottom of the Black Sea. Okay, so but what I didn't talk about was this. So here, this is, I was looking up a little bit about this uh, 
Rapucha class, and that is uh, the type of uh, landing craft that this is. And I was looking at something about it, and I, I was tipped off by some, one of my viewers, and this was really good. I, I really appreciate how how you guys add things to the discussion. So here, where was it built? It was built in, uh, in 1986, where in the, and I'm going to mispronounce this, Gdansk shipyard, uh, a large Polish shipyard located in the city of Gdansk. Uh, the yard gained international fame when Solidarity was founded there in September 1980. So, but what's interesting about that is we were just talking about the founder of Solidarity. I just did, highlighted him the other day, former Polish president, Lee Waleza visited U.S. Capitol this week in order to rally renewed U.S. military aid to Ukraine. The 80-year-old labor leader turned politician, Nobel Prize laureate, said the United States and the world have a unique opportunity to facil uh, facilitate political regime change in Russia. Now, this guy was the bleeding edge of reform in the 1980s, early 1990s, late 1980s, early 1990s. Um, it was Poland that really bucked the Soviet Union, one of the first to do though, do that. Lithuania in 1991. And, uh, you know, I've talked to members of parliament from Lithuania when when uh, they said, hey, we're, we're, we're going to go now. Uh, the, the Constitution says that we're free and independent states and we decide we want to leave. And the Soviets sent tanks. The people in, in Lithuania came out and locked arms all around the uh, the Seimas, that's their parliament building, in, in rows many, many people deep. Uh, in order to protect their members of parliament, and the Soviets blinked. But that was 1999. What happened in the late 80s, like 89, was solidarity. The solidarity movement was what really threw off the Soviet Union, and, and he should be rightly praised for that. So this ship actually comes from the shipyard where this president who was the leader of solidarity was actually like he it was founded there so <laughs> it's quite a and and i and i only got that because one of my viewers said this great stuff professor as always here's a little bit of historical connections the kunikov was built in 1986 at the danzig wharf in poland lich waleza the first president of the post-communism poland did the work at that time the ship was built at the wharf before he organized the uprising in poland 19 88 great historical connections proud to have lived at this time and change in eastern germany so so that's what was going on that's the background so i learn things just like you do so that i, I really appreciate uh, my community because they've informed me about all kinds of things okay third story so uh, this morning i talked about how weird it was that we had a senate bill pass and then the speaker of the house said no 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 we're not going to entertain this this is dead on arrival it's not going anywhere and then the republicans went and impeached um secretary mayorkas the homeland security uh secretary and and of course that's not going to go anywhere and it's just, it's a, it's a big mess. And people will continually ask me, Dr. Gertis, I, I don't understand your optimism. Why do you think that this is going to happen? I'm telling you, there's just a stupidly long, bizarre uh, gridlock cr uh, process that's created for gridlock before they can solve their thing. It's like having a big riddle that they all have to work out. And if they don't work together as a team, they can't work it out. But but they're going to do that. And Market Watch just came out with this article today. Johnson offers fresh criticism of the Senate's Ukraine bill, but the House is expected to give okay eventually. They will. They're going to uh, extort some concessions from the other side and they'll work it out, I'm pretty sure. Now, if you don't know who Market Watch is, Market Watch is related to, it's a Dow Jones company related to the Wall Street Journal and Barron's and, and other companies like that. So I believe that they're going to work it out. And I don't think that this is just um, naive optimism. I've been paying attention to this kind of thing for a long time. I understand how the system works and they're just working the different levers within the system. So part of it is policy and part of it is politics. And we just have to understand what's going on. Okay. That's all that I want to say. I know that this was extended time and I apologize for going long, but I, I wanted to give you some, some, uh, real context to these particular stories. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, and the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.